Hello everyone, greetings to you all. Today is going to be an amazing lesson. I've been working on this one for a while. So, here's what we're doing. What we are doing today, first and foremost, is going to be Kinjiru Jinkoto's Guitar Mastery Class in Heavy Blues and Hard Rock Guitar in the style of Michael Shanker. So get ready, everyone. I think you will thoroughly enjoy this one. And I'm going to teach this so that it is very easy to be understood by both beginners, advanced, intermediate. All right. There's going to be some very cool things we're going to cover. One of the things that inspired me to putting this one up is I've been seeing a lot of posts th throughout the internet today. In terms of guitar playing and guitar players, there's a, still a lot of people struggling with picking, tone, moving their fingers, so on and so forth. So I'm in the avid hope, and I believe, and I don't really use that word, and so when I do use it, I don't use it lightly. I believe that this lesson can solve all of those problems, and it will if you guys practice what I'm about to teach. Because I know for a fact it will help. Because I do these things. So it's helped me. Alright, so there's that. Now, first thing. Couple, couple little key points to mention here. Number one. When I see uh, questions about, well, you know, how do I hold the guitar and... And, and with fingering and so forth, all right? One of the things you want to do is you want this part of your thumb, and, and yes, I know I'm left-handed, but regardless, you can do the same thing with your left hand that I'm doing with my right hand, okay? It's a matter of imitating the shape and the form because there is proper form with guitar playing, all right? Notice, too, I have my guitar up kind of high, right? makes the picking and the fretting much easier. The lower down the guitar is, okay, that's not going to be very conducive or appropriate for reaching, all right? And the other thing is, for those of you guys that have, like, let's say, not flying V guitars like this, and you have more of a traditional type of body, let's say a Telecaster, a Strat, a Les Paul, or or somewhere in between those, let's just say, hypothetically. If you are a right-handed guitar player and you're picking with your right hand, you don't want the guitar on your right leg, all right? You want the Randy Rhodes method, which is the classical guitar method. You want to shift that and put the body on your opposite leg, okay? And have the guitar somewhat up. And if you have a footstool, so much the better. But that's why I like V's, because you don't have to worry about any of that. It's already exactly where it needs to be. So, in terms of the hand, you want this part of your thumb, right where it bends, right where that joint is, directly in the back of the neck, right in the middle of the neck. Okay, so just test that out. Like, just, you know, and, and glide your hand across and, and see... Once you do that, all right, you're going to have much better reach and more control of what you're doing. Second thing, and equally as important, picking. That really, literally, is how much of the pick I use. You see how close that is to my index finger, okay? You don't need a lot of the pick, all right? You need the tip. And the side, that's why I like these triangle picks, right? 
Again, I mentioned these once before. Let me do so again. These are the Clayton USA 1.00 millimeter picks. I used to find these at Guitar Center. Um, they don't have many more, but these are great for artificial harmonics, and it's just an amazing pick. I mean, it's it's probably out of any pick I've ever used. It is definitely my most favorite, all right? I use them religiously. All right, now, the other thing is, you want your palm on the bridge. Now, if you have a stop tailpiece type guitar or a string through body like this one is with just a bridge, you know, traditional bridge as opposed to a trim, you know, you just rest your hand on that bridge. And wherever you want to mute, you just, you know... Get them between right where the string is by the bridge to mute, you know, because you may want to do that. It's it's very excellent for heavy blues and hard rock guitar playing for sure. All right, the other thing is you want to keep the pick close to the strings. Here's what I mean when I say that, all right? Give you an example. All right, here is one example for that. All right, so if I'm, let's say I'm on the G string, right, and I'm just doing like a, a phrase, say from the 12th fret to the 13th to the 15th, okay? So it'll be a down, up, down pick, right? Watch my pick. Now, if I use two strings, the D and the G, all right, what I'm going to want to do is the same, very similar concept. Notice I pulled off those last three notes, okay? So as you can see, you just want the pick to glide across the strings. So in order to do that, you want to, that's why you rest your hand, like I said, on the bridge. Gives you some level of comfort. You're not struggling. You're very relaxed. And you really just want that pick to glide across the strings, all right? Now, with that said, uh, the last thing, last very two quick points, very quick points here. I should be in E standard, so let me give you my low E and my A string. that I wanted to mention is my amp and the settings. I am using the Boss Katana, the MK2. My gain is all the way up. My treble is all the way up. My mids and my bass are at about 11 o'clock. And my reverb and delay are right now at about 40% up. So that would be about at 10 o'clock, roughly, okay? That's a total guesstimation. And my setting is the lead channel, all right? And the gain is all the way up, which is the distortion. Got to have that, all right? So, 
With that said, now I'm going to show you some of the type of patterns that we're going to be working with, okay? One is, we're going to be riding both the low E and the A string open on occasion. So that's going to be a lot of, again, muting and doing a lot of this. And a lot of the same thing with the A. That's an exercise to do on a regular basis that will improve your picking. All right, now, some of the patterns we're going to use, all right, and the frets. So first, let me give you the frets we're going to use a lot, okay? Fret two on the low E and the A string, as well as fret three on the low E and the A string. Let me give you a quick example of what I mean by that. Okay? And we're going to be using the third and the fifth a lot on both the E and the A. see a lot of vibrato so we're going to be doing a lot of bending so what you want to do is push down or push up yeah pull down or push up as it were I have to push up you guys will be pulling down just slightly like a little bit of a bend okay and get that artificial harmonic going on in there with your picking on occasion which simply means when you pick the note, let your th the skin of your thumb slightly, slightly touch the string while it's vibrating, and you'll get that art artificial harmonic. It's something you got to work on, but you will develop it if you haven't already. It's invaluable. So many great players use it. Michael Shankar, Eddie Van Halen. Randy Rhodes, I mean, the list is, just goes on as far as that goes. Okay, so again. Okay, a lot of that. And stretching of the fingers from the third to the fifth to the seventh, so. I'm hammering on. I pick once and hammer on those last two notes. My index finger is on the third and then I hammer on. Now you could start from an open and then go from the second fret and slide up to the third and hammer on like so. Seventh fret, ninth fret, same thing. And there we are. Seven, nine, and ten. Okay, and then 9, 10, 12. A lot of 
that and a lot of this. <laughs> Friend. So what I just did is I hit the string open and then hammered on to the 9th to the 10th, pulled off from the 10th to the 9th, slid down to the 7th, hammered on with my ring finger to the 9th, pulled off, slid down to the 5th, hammer on to the 7th, pull off, now we're on the 5th, slide down, to the third, hammer on to the hammer on to the fifth, pull off, and slide down again to the second, hammer on to the third, pull off, pull off again, hit it open, and go right to the twelfth fret. So okay. And then lastly, we're gonna be using twelve. 14 and 15, so... Same thing with the A string, exact same patterns, all right? So going from like the 9th to the 10th and sliding up to the 14th and to the 15th. So. so sliding up and down. And a lot of 1 4 position as well. So what I mean by that is. apart. Again on the A and the low E. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is right here on the low E on the 15th fret, index finger. On the A string, ring finger on the 17th fret. Okay, and then go down one fret, a half step to the 14th fret. And then to the 12th fret. And then down to the 10th fret. And the 9th fret. And then the 7th fret. 5th fret. 3rd fret. 2nd fret. And then your notorious open E power chord, which is just the open E and your index finger on just the A string, or you can bar the A and the D if you choose. All right, so again, just to kind of recap that, what I'm talking about, combined with some of what I already showed, would be like this. Example.
example would be... example of some palm muting. Okay, and we're going to do the same type of progressions with the A and the D string. Okay, again, so uh, let's say starting from the seventh fret of the A and the ninth fret on the D. Okay, and then sliding up to the ninth fret with your index on the A and your ring finger on the 11th fret of the D. So. See, you follow that? So. So we're going to be doing that up here as well from the 14th to the 15th fret with the index finger on the A and the ring finger on the D. So what I mean by that would be this, of course. power chord. Alright, so if we bar the low E and the A string, we get this. Same thing with the A and the D. Same thing with the D and the G. Notice I'm staying consistent with these frets as I showed before. Two, three, five, seven, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Okay? Now, last thing is we're going to be doing patterns like this. So notice what I'm doing. That's right out of a fifth chord, basically. Seventh fret on the low E. Ninth fret on the A. Then we go to the 10th fret of the low E, 9th fret of the low E, and then back where we started to the root note here on the 7th fret of the low E. So we're going... <laughs> goes, we're going to be going from here. We're going to be going from the 7th fret of the low A to the 9th fret of the D, and then we're going to go to the uh, G string here on the 13th fret. So... And 
then back to the 10th or 9th fret, sorry, on the G. So once again, 7A, 9D, 10G, 9G, and then we're going to go 15D, 14D, and then 12A, so like this. What I mean by that is, you want to rock the string up and back to its natural position. So for, for you guys playing right-handed, you're going to be bending the string up. And I suggest you keep all three of these fingers very close together. Use your ring finger for those bends, okay? Predominantly. So And your pinky, too. What I mean by that is, say if I'm doing a bend right here on the 12th fret of the G, all right? And then I want to grab that B string with my pinky on the 13th fret, right? So like this. And then give that vibrato too when I went down. So I went. Notice how I'm just rocking it up and back to its natural position. If I bend it up and bring it down, and bend it up, and bring it down. So I'm rocking it up and down, up and down. And then trills, which is hammer on, and like that, and pull off. From the 10th and the 9th, right there is where I'm doing that right now. So now that you guys have the general idea, let me now give you some examples of what we're going to be doing. Okay?
do it for part one there will be a second part all right and i hope you guys enjoyed that there will be more to come this is the kind of stuff that's going to help you guys write move your fingers proper technique and just become a much better guitar player for certain this is how to go about doing that all right so you guys have a great one. Take care, and I will be back soon. And please share this video, and do not forget to smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. And for all of you that have been following my channel and watching the videos, I thank you very much. 
And this is all for your benefit, because again, these are 100% free guitar lessons. This is not, oh, go to my website, blah, 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 pay, pay me for, uh, you know, lesson packages and so on and so forth. No. When I started playing guitar, nobody really taught me anything. So I'm just trying to help out as many people as I can, because I know what it was like struggling to get to where I wanted to be. And so I'm just trying to help as many guitarists as I can to develop their skill level and have these attributes to become much better musicians and guitar players, all right? So you guys have a great one. Take care, and I will be back soon.